for the Lord. He applied to me and slayed my pride. He drew me up from the dust, from the dust of the expense, out of the mighty hall, and set my feet upon the rock, making myself secure. Put the new song in my heart, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear, and put their trust in the Lord. And there are those who make the Lord and their trust, who do not turn to the crowd, to those who go astray and fall for us. You are multiplying, O oh Lord, my God. Your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Where to proclaim and tell of them, there will be more that can be counted. Sacrifice and offering do not suffice, but you have given me an open air. Good offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Here I am. This is all of the book that is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my Lord. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. All do not the Lord withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness be me saved forever. We stand and sing hymn 183 to God be the glory.
O oh God, deserve all your praise and all glory belongs to you. So we ask, so as we come to share in this act of worship, we invite the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to come and fill this place. That your perfect will be done this morning. For Christ's sake, we pray. Amen. The prayer of confession. Almighty God and ever loving Father, we acknowledge that your grace has brought us through. We acknowledge that if it, had, if it had not been for your mercy, we cannot even imagine where we would be. Lord, how many times have we neglected to extend the hand of mercy? How many occasions have we not made attempts at reconciliation? Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ, commanded us to love our neighbor as ourselves. But what have we done? And it is really about me, myself, and I. Have mercy and forgive us, Lord. Dear Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ, give us a new commandment urging us to love one another just as he has loved us. We confess, Almighty God, that persons looking in from outside are shocked to know that we treat each other the way we do. Those looking in can hardly believe that we have been commanded to love each other as our Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Have seen have mercy and forgive us, O oh Lord. Prayer comes to Dear Lord, I thank you for being with each and every one of us here today, for this lovely till Sunday. Lord, I thank you for bringing our pastor here today, O Lord. Help him, O Lord, to bring us a wonderful message today. Help us, O oh Lord, to continue on the right part, O oh Lord. Lord, I thank you for these members of this congregation and the oh Lord to continue to come out to the church and the oh Lord to bring out more persons to the church, oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Assurance of pardon. The Lord is merciful and full of compassion. Hear and receive the word of grace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. We serve a praise of worship. That you live in the water.
มนเชียร์ที่มือเ
another one, reading verses 29 through to 42. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who, man who runs ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which, is transla which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. This, my brothers and sisters, is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, O Lord. Please be seated. Ancient word, ever true, changing me. To share with us this morning, I pray that, O oh God, you break all inhibitions, O oh God. Anything that will distract us from receiving from you this morning, I ask you to bring it to the naught in Jesus' name. Give each and every one of us today our daily bread, as we feed on you, O oh God, who is the bread of life. Father, I pray this morning, O oh God, that the words of my mouth, O oh God, and I pray, O oh God, that the meditation, O oh God, of all our hearts, that it be pleasing in your sight to God, our strength and our salvation. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 This morning, brothers and sisters, I'm going to be short because, <laughs> so because I, I want to give you exactly what God would have shared with me and I don't want to add any of my thoughts to it. Alright, so I'm going to give you it exactly as he gave it to me. As, he, as we read the gospel this morning, Jesus, um, John had two disciples um, with him, right, from verses 35 through to 42. And John exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this and they followed him. Two disciples of John just left John and followed Jesus. Did catch that? Yes. His two followers left John, left him to follow Jesus. And when Jesus stood, he saw them following him. Now, parents, most of us would have seen probably Finding Dory. We have seen Finding Dory. <laughs> when, when, I, when I read that, 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 that flashed in my mind because um, 
when the boat's father was looking for him. He said, did he asking everybody, you saw a boat pass, you saw a boat pass? Dory said, yes, I saw a boat follow me. <laughs> the thing with Dory is that Dory has a short memory. So Dory gone behind the boat and not follow it, fall it up. And then Dory looked back and see this, this fish follow it up. She's like, why are you following me? <laughs> Forget it, please. She said it to follow me, right? And that just flashed in my mind. And it's basically kind of like a platform I want to start on because sometimes God tells us to follow Him. And not that He forgets, you know, but we forget sometimes that we're supposed to be following Him. And we end up in a lot of situations that we really should not be in. So, this morning, God will have me ask you three simple questions as we go along our journey. He asked disciples, what are you looking for? But he will have me change it up a bit for you. What do you want out of life, Christian friends? What are you looking for? What is your plan for your life? Whether it be here in this congregation or in the church, or in your life outside of the church what is it that you are looking towards what is your why in life your reason for existence and the question God would have me ask you what do you really want out of life are you working towards that or are you settling for a life of mediocrity so what do you want Christian friends what are you trying to accomplish in this time that you have here on earth? Is there a longing, a deep desire, something inside that you are trying to, to feed, a hole that you are trying to fill? What is it in your life that has you uncomfortable at this time? Are you even working towards something in your life? I want us to do some introspection this morning, not me. God wants us to do some introspection this morning. As we look at our spiritual life, are you accomplishing what you set out to accomplish in your spiritual life? This is January, you know, everybody makes New Year's resolution. And by February, you have forgotten what it is, right? But what are you working towards in your spiritual life? Are you on the path to that thing that you're working towards? In your family life, what are you trying to accomplish in your relationship? One with your spouse, are you all working towards something? You know, um, a lot of um, marriages break up because we're not working really towards much. We just live in, or oh, let's say, we exist in the same space. And really and truly, you, you unhappy, they unhappy, everybody unhappy, but nobody wants to say anything. A man or woman is at their happiest when they are in pursuit of a worthwhile goal or dream. What are you pursuing in your life right now? When, the, when, the, when Jesus asked the disciples, what are, you, what are you looking for? It was more than a surface question. It's something deeper. When you look at your life, what are you trying to fill? What are you trying to, to accomplish? So that your life can have more significance or meaning. Tell somebody next to you, your life is significant. So sorry, but that's not the intent. <laughs> but what what really actually are you working towards? The thing is, the the, the, the amount of time and effort you put behind what you're working towards or your why will tell the world, you're basically telling the world who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. Basically, your integrity. Question number two, what he asked. So he asked, what do you want? But the second question, when do you want it? 
That thing that you're trying to accomplish. When do you want that? The disciples, they left John when? Immediately. One time they left and pursued what they wanted. They wanted the teacher. They wanted to be with the Messiah. They wanted to fill that void. That something that was missing within them. Question is, what what do you want? When do you want what you say you want? When do you want it? What kind of effort are you willing to put in to having what you say you want? Because really and truly, um, a dream without a date is simply a date and a plan, sorry, is simply a wish. Not so? Yeah. yeah. A dream without a date and without a plan is a wish. So what's your timeline? that you're looking to accomplish what you set out to accomplish. What's the degree of urgency are you willing to put in to accomplish that which you say you want? When are you going to start? Or, a lot of persons would have started, when are you going to continue? Really and truly, people are waiting for us to become all that we can be so that they can become all that they can be. There are certain people I can talk to that I can get results. And other persons I can talk to where I will get no results. But they need to hear from you. There are people Suzette can talk to that if I talk to them, they will not listen to me. But Suzette say one word, and it's like, whoa, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. <laughs> and that's the reality of life. God is calling us to determine what you want. When do you want what you say that you want? What kind of effort are you going to put behind it? Because the reality is that when you pursue something new, life is going to throw some obstacles at you. Have you ever realized that? Yeah. That when you decide on a course of action, life is going to throw obstacles your way. Yeah. Life is going to throw obstacles your way. And depending on the the um, amount of effort you put behind what you say you want, people will either take you seriously or take you as a joke. Correct? Now the third question. So we are working on. What are you willing to give up to have what you say that you want? The reality is, whatever you are looking to accomplish, it requires a degree of sacrifice. Correct? Now, I've heard this saying. Leaders do at once what others do at last. Leaders do at once what others do at last. The thing is, whatever God will have placed in us, guys, is to act upon that information immediately. You know why? Because at that time, I know Reverend Richard would have spoken a lot about the chaotic moment. At that time, is when everything is aligned for your success. The thing is, we doubt and we delay. And those two things that we do, doubt and delay, causes us to miss out on the full measure of the anointing or the blessing that we are to receive. Am I making sense this morning? And what God is saying, if you say you want what you want, you need to be willing to give up some things. Give up some entertainment time. You know, right now, every almost everybody on, on some social media platform, you know, they say, okay, I'm just going up on TikTok for about uh, five minutes. When they check again, two, three hours pass. You're going up on Facebook, you're watching Netflix, you're on whatever that seems to distract you. God is saying to us this morning, my Christian friend, be clear in your mind as to what you want. Be clear in your mind as to when you want it, but be sure that you're able to check what you're willing to do to accomplish that thing. Because remember, this, um, there's a scripture that speaks about count the cost. Not so? Before a man puts up a building, he must count the cost. Not so? Because if he start the building, the scripture says that, and he unable to finish, what will happen? So will laugh at him. Not so? So come the cost. Come the cost of the thing that you want to accomplish. Tell somebody next to you, come the cost. Come the cost. But also, be real with yourself. Know thyself. 
Tell somebody, know yourself. <laughs> it's very important those two things. Pump the course, know yourself. But also, the reality is, be honest with yourself. Amen. Be honest with you. Because the truth is, if you know you're incapable of accomplishing or doing certain things, oh gosh, please, ask for help. You know? Ask for help. We are not supposed to do this life alone. We are supposed to be in communion with each other. Your strengths, my strengths, we work together to accomplish whatever we set out to accomplish. Because my weakness may be your strength. And I need your strength right now at this time in my life. Am I making sense to anybody here this morning? Yeah. And therefore, we have to, to count the cost for what we want to accomplish. In whatever area of your life, you have to learn to discipline your disciplines. Whatever it is that you say you want to accomplish, go after it. And as I tell us in, in my mentorship program, go after what you say you want as the day pants for the water. And if you understand that, that means you're going to go after it as though your life depended on it. Because the reality is, it does. You want God to pour into you, but your words are saying, Lord, I give enough, you know, I tired. Guess what? You have just cut off your supply. Okay, so you had enough. Well, okay, then I can't pour into you anymore. Because what I gave you is for you to give others. When you decide with your mouth that I had enough, what do you really want God to do? You had enough. You are slain by the words of your mouth. So God has saved us. What are you willing to give up? Count the cost. Know who you are. Don't fool yourself. Because the only person you're ready to fool it is you. Make up your mind that you're going to go after whatever it is. That God would have placed something in you. I don't know what it is. But you do know. Bring it out. Um, you know, there, there's a scripture that says, Paul what? Paul water and somebody plant and let God only be increased. You can only do what you can do. Let God do his part. Making sense? And that is what God wanted me to share with you this morning, my yes. brothers and sisters. Yes. So I pray that to whomsoever it was intended that, that you take what God has to say to you this morning. So that your future self would thank you for being obedient to God. And then when you hear at the end of your life, God will be proud to say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's right. Enter. Okay, Mr. Mo. I just wanted to add to what you just said. And you know, as I sit and reflect, your message this week is a continuation from last week's message by Reverend Julian Commitment. Father, I pray, O oh God, for the, the 
lead us in this congregation, O oh God, that as they, O oh God, go and grow through their situations and their struggles, O oh God, that they will not lean on their own understanding, O oh God, but in all their ways, that they will acknowledge you so that you can direct their path. And all of us, O oh God, who would have been given assignments by you where we have put it on hold, O oh God, for whatever reasons, O oh God, we ask you, O oh God, that today we start back on our journey. Today that we give you all the praise. And today we walk by faith and not by sight. And that today, O oh God, that your perfect will be done in and through our lives. Father, I pray, O oh God, for each member in this congregation, that as you continue to develop the gift within us, O oh God, that we not hide it, O oh God, but that we bring it forward, O oh God, so that you can use us at different levels in this part of your vineyard. Father, I pray, O oh God, that we, we don't be shy about the things concerning you, but that as we follow you, that as we deepen our understanding of you, that as we get better and better every day in every way, O oh God, that we allow our words, O oh God, to be words that build up and not break down. That we allow our thoughts, O oh God, to be positive and not negative. That we, O oh God, continue to be that light, O oh God, that you have called us to be. Father, I pray, O oh God, for those who are sick and shut in, in this community, O oh God, that you would bless them indeed, O oh God. That from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, O oh God, your word reminds us that it's by your stripes that we are healed. And that healing, O oh God, is the children's bread. So heal them, O oh God, in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. That anything, O oh God, any dis-ease or discomfort that they may have, O oh God, that you bring, bring them to fullness and wholeness once again. Father, if it's in your will. But Father, even if that is not your will for them, O oh God, help them to know that they still have a purpose. That their contribution is still important for the greatness, the significance for your kingdom, O oh God, to come in this part of your vineyard. So I pray, O oh God, that you move in this congregation and in the homes of those who are assembled here this morning, O oh God, that everything, O oh God, that you have ordered and put in place for all success, O oh God, that it shall come to fruition. Whatever we have put our hands to, O oh God, that it will be multiplied. And I pray, O oh God, O oh, that you would bless us indeed and enlarge our territories. Father, that your hand will always be with us to keep, O oh God, us away from evil and from harm. And that your perfect will, O oh God, be done in and through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, all is glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn of response this morning is, With your all on the altar of sacrifice lay, your heart does it stand at peace and sweet rest when you yield him your body and soul? If you're able to stand and stand.
Amen. 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 Good morning, Christian friends. Good morning. Once again, it's nice to be in the house of the Lord. Blessed good morning to all our brothers and sisters in Christ. I greet you in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do we have any visitors, first time visitors with us this morning? I don't see any. But I want to welcome again each and every one of you. Brother Kalek, once again, I want to thank you much for that short but sweet sermon you gave us this morning. And I hope and pray each one of us will have gotten something and taken away with us. Thanks and appreciation goes out to all those who clean the sanctuary for the morning's worship, as well as the audiovisual team, the ushers, the musicians, Brother Holly Scripton, our Sunday school teachers, and all others who partake in making the service enjoyable. I say I present you. Prayers. Let us continue to remember in our prayers or connection of bishop, or district bishop, all our circuit ministers, also our own superintendent minister, or local ministers in the circuit, local preachers, Sunday school teachers, the youths and young adults, the children, the sick and shattered members, as well as those who have recently lost a loved one. Do we have anyone celebrating a birthday today or during the coming week? If so, please stand. Okay, we have Sister Catherine. Just want to wish you a happy birthday. Hope you live to see many more enjoy. We now sing the happy birthday song for you. Mm -hmm. Reverend Baker, who 
as we all know, is at the circuit Caribbean district for 2023. Web session continues until Tuesday, January 17th. And then writing and inviting all persons to join in and fully participate in the following. The first one is the Dynamic Family Celebration Worship Service live via YouTube, which will be held today, Sunday at 4 p.m. Number two, Morning Worship Services broadcast to the public via YouTube from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on Monday 16th, which will be led by the St. Vincent Circuit and on Tuesday the 17th, it will be led by the St. Lucia Circuit. Number three, District Zoom Live Interactive Discussion Forum, which is on the existing mission projects. Launched, this will be held on Tuesday 17th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. It has the ID number, anyone interested, I can give you it after because it's a bit lengthy. We would like you all to come in and fully participate also in that. These are all the notices for today. I am grateful for your prize and offering.
point our hands forward for our sister Catherine as we bless her as she celebrates yet another year with us here on earth. God is good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so let's bless her. So God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for Sister Catherine, oh God, and her life, oh God, and her ministry here in this part of your vineyard. Yes, Father, I pray, oh God, that you would bless her, oh God, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Father, that you would put your angels in charge concerning her, oh God. That you would bring her, oh God, back to wholeness, oh God. That she is able to do more than she could even think or imagine. Father, I pray, oh God, that you would help her to remember who she is and whose she belongs to. That she is the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. She is a winner, oh God, and not a loser. And anything, oh God, that the enemy would send her away, Father, that you would put your hedge of protection around her, that they shall not penetrate your barriers of her. And Father, let your perfect will be done in and through her life. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and Amen. 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 So, let's stand as we bless each other with the benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore.